Hello everybody, today I'm gonna to show you how I found this great looking sport coat that features functional surgeon's cuffs and also has half canvas construction for $12 and I'm going to document a process. This was actually custom made for somebody whose initials are different than mine. And I'm gonna show you the process of how I'm gonna have that little patch change to have my initials or something like that put on them. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Okay guys, I am here at Blonde Lobster Embroidery, right? You see the, the business name there. A local business here in, so this is considered Stowe, Stowe, Ohio. We're in Northeast Ohio. She serves people online. Do you have social media website? I have a Facebook page. Facebook page, which is, they can find it under? Blonde Lobster Embroidery. Blonde Lobster Embroidery. And uh, I'm gonna show you around this place here and talk about what we're gonna do. Okay. So I didn't see any of this wasn't here last time I was here, right? No, I think we only had that machine and this machine last time. Really? Wow. So what is all this stuff? You've got big thing over there. These are printers, direct to garment printers. Direct to garment printers. Okay, it, and like it prints directly on okay. to like the you garment. Said, okay. And you can't feel it at all. It becomes part of the garment. It won't wash it out. It doesn't or... wash away. It doesn't wear off. That's amazing. And that's t shirts, obviously sweatshirts like you're wearing. Sweatshirts. And bags. that's what you do over here. Okay. And you that's can do any logo from artwork, right? Correct. That's you can really do pretty cool. much anything unless it's trademarked. Okay. Got it. Unless got you it. have permission. Got it. Trademark. Okay. And then what do we got over, over here? Over here we have the embroidery machines. There's okay. three of them. This is a dedicated hat machine. Oh, that's what these... And then could you show the... I was like, this what is, is that? A face shield? Hoop. <laughs> hat hoop. The hat... Actually, if you want to see it. Uh -huh. Right here. This goes on here. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. Open it up. Uh -huh. The hat gets fed on there. Uh-huh. Oh wow. Like that. And you lock it down and then you put it on the machine. Wow. Oops, I'm sorry. Yep. And, and then there. it would just go right uh, on here. And then it does it turn it as it because it's gotta keep the surface. Yep, so it does it all of that. That's not hooped straight. Don't judge me by mm -hmm. my hooping. That was quick. Uh -huh, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it does all of that movement and does everything itself. That's pretty cool. I see you got a bag here with some... These are some samples. Wow. That... And these are stitched in. That's pretty cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow. I see all these different colored bobbins you got here, like all colors. My, in the oh my gosh. My you got... wall of thread yeah. over there. Wow. Okay. This is pretty yeah. cool. And more stuff here. Another machine. And we want to relate it to the purpose that we're here for, right? <laughs> for this. This is why we're here. And I love this jacket. It's great. Fits me really well. I think I'm, the sleeves, I think, are perfect. Shoulders are perfect. I might need a little tailor on the waist, but my initials, I need REP. Okay. So you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what I learned from talking to a tailor and getting other stuff done is you don't think of construction like if you were rebuilding an engine in a car you say okay the pistons have to fit the board is clear but talk about the technicality of this all right well when this was made it was sewn on before the pocket and the jacket were made mm -hmm. so there's so a there's, lining mm -hmm. there's a lining and you can see the stitches through there but they're not on the inside of the pocket so the lining is not attached to that patch correct got it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the stitches and take the patch off mm -hmm hopefully be able to get these stitches out but because these meaning the initials the, the initials the vad if you look some of those stitches are very very tiny so i'm not sure if we'll be able to fully get them out okay without creating a hole or Got some it. damage so mm -hmm. the first step is going to be getting it off the jacket and then seeing if i can get those stitches out now now you said this was machine done and you were like oh no for sure that's machine this is done. yeah this is a, a machine zigzag you can tell stitch how. Just the uniformity. Uniformity. Okay, because when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, then oh, they get closer, but that's the machine slowing down. That's Correct. not. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just a uniformity. feeding issue. Got it. Because you were coming to the end of mm -hmm. it. Okay. Okay. So if I can get the stitches out, mm -hmm. I will then embroider your initials on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I can't, we'll have mm -hmm. to maybe look into some other options, maybe try to mm -hmm. find a piece of gray fabric that 
sort of matches or darker as as we can. or you just we, well we could do anything black. we could do a blue we we could do anything and then uh -huh. i would just create a new patch okay and then when i sew it back on you can see right now the stitches are not inside the pocket but when i'm done you'll be able to feel those stitches okay. on the inside of your pocket uh -huh. otherwise i would have to deconstruct the right whole jacket which would be and... very intrusive and that that's one of the key things where i really love talking to people that you know know about these things because those are things that the average person may not think about is do you really want to be that intrusive in other words in our perfect minds we're like well how about you do it without doing that well no you just right you have to have one or the other right you gotta, and no yeah. one will ever know except for you when you put your hand in your pocket because it's not mm -hmm. going to go all the way through it's just going to be on the inside of the pocket that's awesome that's awesome now as far as what goes on it i could choose just a standard roman a numeral font or upload a logo to you or you could do it yeah we could do anything these are my standard fonts uh -huh. obviously i have a lot more but wow okay this is just what i usually show people oh that's cool quick. bermuda font i lived in bermuda for three, <laughs> i lived there for three and a half years that's why it's cool like i would probably pick something like chelsea or i think is you know, and like i that. would do a few samples mm -hmm. Okay. And because sometimes the letters look weird if it's just initials on some of the curlier uh, ones. Okay, got it. Um, but I would send you some samples and then you would pick which one you like the best. Which machine are you going to do this on? This is going to be done on this happy machine right here. This one. Wow. Wow, look at all that. I have no idea how any of this works and why this, there's... This has 12 different needles, which yeah. means I can have 12, 12 different colors at one time without having to change a color during Holy a design wow. unless there's more than 12 colors in the design then i would have to switch throughout wow but right what now, is this machine called it's just an embroidery machine embroidery machine? an industrial okay. embroidery machine there like are computer cnc control yep. wow that's crazy there's some home models that are tabletop mm -hmm. that aren't able to do larger than a four by four and they're not able to do certain things because mm -hmm. of how they're set up this is industrial mm -hmm. um it can handle heavier things it can do more wow super cool super cool and again your facebook page blonde lobster embroidery here, right here. there it is blonde lobster embroidery and that's your phone number three three zero five five four five seven eight eight you're in ohio but you said you do stuff with out of state i do out of state uh, they can email mm. it it's just blonde lobster embroidery at hotmail.com so if you want to turn around again it'd be blonde lobster embroidery at hotmail.com got it okay yep. okay awesome yeah i ship okay People okay. are welcome to come to my shop if they're local. Okay. Take a look around. Oh, wow, this is really super cool. Wow. All right. So what is this machine called again? This is an industrial embroidery machine. And it just slowed down and it's doing somebody else's work. And there it goes. Look at that. That thing is so cool. It kind of outlines the lettering. I think that's a U right there, right? That's fascinating. And what's it doing with the zigzag before it, now it's filling it in. The stitch is before, that's a back down stitch, it just, it's called uh, yeah, underlay. Know. Underlay, okay. It gives it some body so that the stitch is still gap. Wow, and it's pulling from that red spool. I don't know if you can tell, the, I don't think you can see it in the video, but it's pulling, the spool doesn't turn, it just pulls off of it, right? Yeah. And that counter there showing, that's 7,000 stitches on the top, right? Correct, yeah. Out of 13, 431 to complete yeah. the design. That's crazy. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Look at that All right, guys, I got the jacket back. You guys ready for this? Look at that. How cool is that? Here's the jacket paired with a pair of uh, blue Joseph A. Banks slacks, and you're going to see the coat paired with a few other things here in a moment.
a little difficult to show, but here's what Candace was talking about. Can you see down in there? You see the stitching obviously there, right? So it's sewn in through the inner lining of this pocket, but of course not to the outside of the jacket. That's what she was talking about there. Okay. Gray, uh, gray silver. I used to paint cars. Two hardest colors to match when you're painting cars. I did it, you know, like just in the garage at home, you're not professionally, but silver and red. Cause you think red is red, but it's not. There's orange reds and maroon reds and purple reds. And you know, there's a whole range, but silver is kind of the same way, gray. I wanted to show you this jacket paired up with some uh, different pairs of slacks. And I've got some decent natural sunlight here. This first one is a pair of Periello's portfolio slacks. You can see the jacket has kind of a very, very fine pattern in it. This does not, I would not wear these two together. They're too close. And I think the same with this one. It's just too close in color. So it you, you can't pass it off as a suit. A suit should be cut from the same cloth. It's too close, not enough of a contrast. So neither of those I think work. I would not wear either of those first two. Second two, this is a pair of uh, Kenneth Cole Reaction and Lauren Ralph Lauren. This one's okay. Still maybe a little close. I'm trying to change the angle so you can see in the light. I think this pair works pretty well. There's a little bit of a contrast. I like that. Okay. Evan Picconi, Joseph A. Banks. These are black. I think the black always works. And I think this charcoal gray works as well. These just are a little fuller, traditional, more traditional cut. I just don't like these slacks as much, just the way they fit me. And lastly here, a pair of Joseph A. Banks. I got these, these are $139 retail. Never pay full price for Joseph A. Banks stuff, but I got them online for $19 plus tax, $19.99 plus tax shipped. If you order stuff from Joseph Banks, try to have it shipped to a local store and pick it up at the store if you can, because that gives the store sales credit doesn't cost you anything else. I think that works pretty well, a nice blue. I wish I had more blue slacks, but I don't. We decided to use a light blue thread that matched the lining for the text. I'm a big believer in it's better to have a lower quality sport coat or jacket suit coat that fits you than an expensive one that doesn't, okay? So I'll touch lightly on that. Now, first of all, why is this one not such a high quality? Well, the, the shell is wool. How do you know that? Usually you look in one of the pockets in the inside, you pull out a tag. This case, it does not have very much detail, but it at least does tell us it's 100% wool. Now, wool is not necessarily, if you're gonna have a suit that you beat up a lot, maybe you do want polyester or polyester blend, okay? But then within wool, there's many different grades of wool. The finer the thread, generally speaking, the better it is. Uh, so the lining, it doesn't say so on the tag, but the lining is artificial materials. Um, that's not as good. Now you're gonna see plastic buttons. And then you're also gonna see, if you're not into suits, it may seem like a dumb thing, the buttonholes. The one on the lapel is one of the, the places that you're gonna see this. Can you see, I'm, I'm pulling it, it does not open. So it's not even a real buttonhole, it's sewn shut. That is a very low quality buttonhole. You're gonna see machine work. For example, I'm gonna try to show you this here. If I take this lining on the inside and I tug, it's very tight and the stitches that you do see are 100% even. That's just machine done, hand done is higher quality. Right, and I'm being very brief here. Now, one of the main things is the way it's constructed. There is padding in all sport coats. So if I take this and I pinch, I try to pinch the inside and I try to pinch the outside. I know you can't feel, but can you see the thickness here? When I pinch the outer shell, I can feel the padding stuck to the outer shell. I can't pick it off. I mean, if I pulled super hard, I could, but it's glued. This is called fused construction. So what they do is they take the padding, just, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's some cheap material, some padding, and they glue it to the back side of the outer shell. That's why it's stuck to the, see here when I pinch the lining, the lining is thin, there's nothing behind it, but here I can feel the lining and it stays stuck to the outer shell. Let me compare that to, uh, this is one of my better suits. This is probably my best suit. 
Um, I bought it from eBay, but the new full retail price on this Brooks Brothers suit is $1,000. Now, if I take this one, first of all, if I look at the tag, okay, so this is a Brooks Brothers uh, 1818 Regent, and I believe Regent fit for Brooks Brothers means uh, like a tailored fit. And I'm gonna put a snapshot, a picture of this. So here's the tag. I know you can't read it here on the screen, but I'll zoom in on a picture of it. The shell is 100% wool. The lining is 100% Bemberg, okay? And uh, it goes into a lot more detail here. But the bottom line is Bemberg is a um, natural material. Now, if I look at the sleeves here, this is a little difficult to show. If I look at that and I give it a tug, can you see how it actually, I don't know if you can tell, but it pulls away. I think this is hand stitched because they're not 100% even. You can see the spacing changes a little bit and you see you tug on it, there's a little bit of slack in the thread. I'm gonna link in my video here, the experts that have taught me this, because I'm not an expert on this. Now, the shell, I'm gonna pinch the inside of the jacket and I'm gonna pinch the outside. Now watch this. On this one, when you pinch the two, you see this? Do you see how thin this is? There's no padding on the back side. There's no padding on the back side. The padding, I can pull the padding do you see how thick this is? The padding is between my fingers. The padding is not stuck to the outside shell. So what this means is this is either a half canvas or full canvas, but this is actually a half canvas construction. So that means this portion, how do you explain this in 30 seconds or less? The construction of the padding, there's a lot more time, energy, effort, and materials gone into it. It is a separate piece, not just a piece of foam glued to the outside. So what happens is when you wear this, it conforms to your body better. Number one, it conforms to your body better. When you move with a fused, you'll feel like you're wearing a piece of armor right here. It like moves as one piece. It's more flexible, it's more malleable. It's just nicer overall, okay? Um, and I had this laying down on the couch here. I think I put a little bit of a wrinkle in it, but, and also it's cooler because you have airflow going between those layers. So half canvas construction is much preferred. I'm not sure if you can really tell a difference on the video, but if I put on the fused one, there was a long time I couldn't tell the difference, but when you wear them, you'll feel the difference. When you put this one on, it doesn't conform to your body as much. I don't know if you can tell, it, 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 it's just not as nice. It just doesn't feel as well. When you move, the fabric doesn't lay as nicely. It doesn't conform as much, right? So I don't know if you can tell on this short video. So I believe it's machine done. I should say the, the lining here. When I tug on it, that's machine done. It does have surgeon's cuffs. It used to be that surgeon's cuffs were only on high-end clothes, but I'd say five, 10 years ago, you started to see this crop up on not high-end stuff. So this is a bonus. This is really nice, okay? But not necessarily indicative of high quality. Um, you can also look at how the collar is attached. This one looks like it's machine done to me. And this just says 100% wool. I don't know what the grade of wool is, and I don't know what the lining material is. So what are the positives on this? Oh, it does have a floating. It's a half canvas construction. See, I can pinch. The, the, the um, padding is not stuck to the outer shell, as you can see how thin that is. Okay, one more time compared to this one where I can't pull it off. You see how thick it is. It can feel it within there. So it has surgeon's cuffs. It has half canvas construction, you know, so it's not a high level, but it's a, you know, it's a mid-grade coat. And because of the person's initials, it was made to measure, right? So this is pretty good quality for my standards right now, anyway, at my budget level. I hope that kind of helps. I hope that made a little bit of sense. Now I'm going to show you the coat paired up with a few different outfits. So the first one coming up here is the same uh, blue slacks from Joseph A. Banks, uh, along with a shirt that's got a pattern on it, and it's got some purple and, uh, you know, I guess a, a pink or lavender in it. And uh, I think it works pretty well. I've also got a blue Seiko vintage watch from my father. And by the way, you leave generally with uh, surgeon's cuffs, you leave the last button unbuttoned. kind of shows the fact that they are functional. Here, just by changing the slacks to jeans, a pair of undistressed dark blue jeans, you can see it completely changes the look of the outfit to something pretty casual. And this is a pair of Allen Edmonds McAllister's and Oxblood. Next outfit here is for Christmas. First, I paired it with a green tie-in shirt, and then I had the Oxblood shoes with green laces in them for Christmas. And I think I wore this to a networking event. Uh, love these Oxfords with a spit shine. And again, gotta leave that last button unbuttoned, Vintage Seiko.
Lastly here, a different pair of slacks that are actually gray with a blue window pane and a pair of black Park Avenue Oxfords with flat laces in them. Um, and I wore a blue shirt. I didn't want too many colors, so the blue ties into the blue on the pants. And uh, this is an Armatron watch, fairly cheap watch. This last ensemble is with the same dark blue slacks, but this time featuring walnut Allen Edmund strands with blue laces in them, a yellow Ike Bihar tie that ties into the walnut. It's got blue dots in it as well to tie into the slacks. And for more of a neutral background color, a white Brooks Brothers dress shirt. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if you own a pair of shoes that cost more than your mortgage or rent payment, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel. God bless. Have an awesome day. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.